So a while back, I started a series that I endearingly called WTF is this distro, right? It's a very clever but clunky name, but I liked it. And those videos were very popular. So we're going to reboot them. We're going to do some more. And the way I decided to do it this time is instead of looking at the newly released or newly announced update page of DistroWatch, I went and hit the random button. Now, I had some rules. Uh, it can be a popular distro, obviously. So one of the first distros that came up the first time I hit the random button was Pop OS. That wouldn't make an interesting video. So I hit the button again. And I was given a distribution that I had never heard of before, which is kind of the point of the series. So today, we're going to be asking the question, WTF is Snail Linux? Now, I had never heard of this, obviously, and I had no clue what it was. So I read the DistroWatch page, and even after reading the DistroWatch page, I still really had no clue what it is. Other than I know that it is based on Arch Linux, it comes with the i3 window manager. So that's an interesting plus, in my opinion, and that there is apparently no way to install it. Now, there are a ton of of live ISO, live DVD type distributions out there that are not meant to be installed. So that's not really all that impressive or unique. So it's definitely something that, you know, has been done many times before. But what I haven't been able to find is a mention anywhere where it says that Snail Linux, if I'm pronouncing it right, is persistent. Now, if you don't know what that means, let me explain. Persistent simply means that you have a live ISO where you can do your work in. And when you shut it down, it saves everything to the USB drive that you're using instead of to the hard drive. That means when you come back to the live session, all of your stuff is still there. That's what persistent means. Now, many distributions have persistent modes. MX Linux is one of them. You know, there's Slacks, I think, is another version of Linux distribution that has persistence. Snail Linux doesn't seem to have persistence, which doesn't make much sense to me given that it's a live ISO. So what's the purpose of it, right? The problem is, is like a lot of the distros that I've covered in this series before, well, it doesn't have, you know, a very good website. And their website is on SourceForge. And if you have followed my channel at all, you'll know that I absolutely despise distributions that don't have their own website and only use SourceForge. I can't stand it. Like, I understand the idea that Domains can be expensive. They're like $10 a year, right? And not everybody has $10 a year that they can put on a domain. And, you know, websites are expensive. So I understand that. But, you know, like GitHub and GitLab have free pages. You could make one of those, you know. So it's not as if you have to use money. But I'm not going to, you know, just I'm going to calm down about that. And we're going to look at the quote unquote website for Snail Linux. And this is the biggest problem I have with this entire distribution. There's hardly any information here. Now, they do have a wiki. The fact that SourceForge even offers this feature is just still really weird. And there is not a ton of information on the wiki. There's exactly one page. That's it. Now, there are other quote unquote pages, right? But it just shows you the build process and, you know, a little blurb about wireless networking if you don't know how to connect to the, to the Wi-Fi. Other than that, Everything is on the wiki home, and this does come included on the ISO itself, so if you need to reference this, you can. It does have some important information outside of how to use it. It does have some of the default key bindings and some of the information you need on the things that it includes, which we'll go over here in a minute. But other than that, there's no information here other than the brief summary. Live distro with i3 and Firefox. Lots of network and file system utilities. That's what Snail Linux is. Now, it... it does seem to be an acronym for simple, networked, and live. That seems to be the acronym of what this actually stands for. But again, I'm not sure what good it is without persistence. But again, we're going to go ahead and take a look at it. So let's go ahead and jump in. Now, I have tried this on hardware. It's on my Ventoy stick, and I played around with it on my laptop for about an hour or so. But we're going to take a look at this now so that I can actually show you it in a virtual machine. So out of the box, we'll just go ahead and close this here for now. This is what you're presented with. It has a standard, very standard i3 window manager layout, except for they've moved the bar from the bottom to the top. And they've, I'm, I'm pretty sure there are some modules missing from i3 blocks up here. 
if that's what they're using as i3 blocks. It might be possible that they're just using i3 status. I can never tell the two apart really if they are just standard and not customized in any way. So I, I'm assuming that this is either i3, i3 status or i3 blocks, but I think they've removed some modules. But other than that, this is standard i3 window manager for the most part. Now they have done some things. So first, when you do super enter to get it to a terminal, it's going to every single time show you this. Now, when I first saw this, I was like, you got to remember, I hadn't read the readme because I never read the readme beforehand. I, I don't know why, I just don't. But the point is, is that, you know, I had no clue what screen was. I thought they were talking about like a screen fetch application, like, you know, NeoFetch or screen fetch or PFetch or something like that. But no, screen is actually a GNU multiplexer of some sort. Now, I had no clue that that was the case. So I just hit yes. Why? And then you're not going to get the NeoFetch. I actually installed that. So ignore that part. But basically what Screen is, is if you've ever used Tmux before, Screen, if that's what it's called, I'm not sure if that's the full name or not. Screen is actually kind of like Tmux. Now, I don't know in terms of features or anything like that, the comparison between Screen and Tmux. So don't, I can't comment on any of that stuff. But from the brief amount that I've read screen is similar to tmux in that it remembers your sessions so my last session i had neofetch open so when i hit yes it remembered that that was the session that i was in and it came back to that session and everything here was here as it was when i left it behind now i've talked about tmux before and some of the awesome features that tmux has and screen seems to have at least some of those features but what i don't understand and again, I'm, it's 100% possible that I'm missing something. If Snail Linux does not have persistence, what's, the, what's good about having a multiplexer that remembers your session? If your computer you know, is shut down at any period of time, all that data is going to be lost. Now, it's possible, again, that I'm just missing something because there's no documentation here. Like I said, there is a readme here. So if we vim into re to the readme, like so basically tells you everything that we just saw there on the website. So I actually didn't show you this on camera, but when you first boot into the live ISO, there's no display manager. It just asks you, would you like to start X basically? So if you've never used start X before, you might be a little bit lost. Basically start X just means that it's going to start X server and whatever script that is set for X server to launch a window manager or whatever. In this case, it's going to be starting I3. Now, it does have some options, which I never played around with, but Y will just start X with an I3 window manager. Uh, N will run as a bash shell, so it'll just keep you into TTY. S will attach an existing screen session or start a new one. And X will join an existing screen session. Now, what I'm wondering now is if this S and X part is going to be the persistent thing that I'm missing. So I'm going to go check that right now because I missed that earlier. Give me a second. Now I'm not going to be able to test. I don't think I'll be able to test it in the VM. So I'm going to go back to the laptop. So to answer my own question, S and X do not seem to do anything in terms of start X. What they actually do is start a bash session of screen, which is that GNU multiplexer that I mentioned before. So when it says screen session, it's not talking about a XORG screen session. It's talking about a screen session as in the multiplexer, as from what I can tell. Now, again, I might be missing something completely. It's 100% possible. Again, there's not a lot of documentation here. I haven't spent a lot of time with it, so I could be making a, you know, a mistake here. But from what I've seen so far, persistence has nothing to do with those things. So back to this little bit of documentation. Everything else here is about standard key bindings that you'll see in i3 what they've set up now you would you'd never actually have to have these because most of the, the key bindings are on the wallpaper now i'm i'm pretty sure that that's actually just on the wallpaper and it's not actually a conky of any kind i'm pretty sure it's just you know like on the wallpaper if we open up this and then go into dot config and go into i3 so they are using i3 status so that's good to know. And we do an ls here and vim into config. So this is the i3 configuration file. So it does set a background. It sets the screen blanking, which is for like turning the 
screen blank after a certain amount of time. So that starts the screen locker, which for whatever reason they went with X auto lock instead of I3 lock, which is an interesting choice. And then we got the fonts and some uh, the key bindings here and the rules and stuff. Just a very standard i3 configuration file. There's not much more here to go over. So in terms of the i3 configuration file, it's very, very, very standard. So the last thing we probably should take a look at are going to be the pre-installed applications. And here's where I have another bone to pick. They use Rofi for their program launcher, which is fantastic. I love Rofi. Rofi is what I use. But they don't use DRUN. Now, if you've ever used Rofi before, you'll know that Rofi has many different modes. The two probably most prominent ones are DRUN and RUN. Now, the difference between DRUN and RUN is that DRUN only shows your installed applications, whereas RUN literally shows everything. And by everything, I mean everything. Every single package that you have installed on your machine is shown by the RUN mode of Rofi. Terminal applications, dependencies, everything. And you can see that because there are 319 entries here. Now, that doesn't mean there are 319 packages on Snail Linux. There's not actually that. Instead, you can see if we go to NeoFetch here, there are actually 153 or so, which is still pretty high for a bog standard Arch Linux installation. Usually it's around 600 or so, uh, even with a window manager installed. That's 600 to maybe 700 or so. So it's a little high, not a ton high. I mean, obviously there's there are distros out there that have way more packages, but that does seem high. But my bone here is that by showing the run version of Rofi and showing all of the packages and all of the scripts and everything that comes on the system inside here, it makes it astonishingly hard to see what's actually installed in terms of, ins you know, applications. So I'm going to get out of that. I'm going to do Rofi-show dRun and we'll show you the installed applications this way because it's just way, way easier. So it comes with Avahi, the server browser for VNC. It comes with uh, Dillo, which is a web browser. I had no clue what that was. I opened it up, and if you open this up, that's what Dillo looks like. If you go to an actual website, which is, if you want to laugh, uh, cast.org, you can it does go there eventually but man does it not render things properly <laughs> uh i'm not sure why this is installed to be honest with you it's really really weird it doesn't seem useful whatsoever but then i don't know maybe there's some kind of weird uh web dev use case for a, a browser like dillo before you know maybe i don't know it doesn't really matter but still it's it, it's it's a weird inclusion it has dosbox elinks which is another web browser which i believe this is a terminal based uh, browser. So if we go to the linuxcast.org on here, we'll see that it does in fact show you the linuxcast.org uh, in a web browser in the terminal. I've never heard of eLynx before. I've heard of Lynx, L-Y and X before. So that's another one that is I've never heard of, which is interesting. You're going to see a pattern here. There are at least four browsers installed. So there is Dillo, and then there's the one that we just looked at eLynx, and then there's Firefox, just normal Firefox. HTOP is installed, LX Terminal, which is the terminal they use by default. Micro is installed, Vim is installed. I'll show you that later. You've already seen that. Midori is another web browser. So this is what Midori looks like. I believe Midori is a offshoot slash some kind of fork of Firefox. Not sure if that's true or not. It, the only reason I say that is because it looks kind of like an old version of Firefox. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that it is, but it looks like a more modern browser than Dillo. So there's that. We'll go. We'll scroll back down here. It does have some of the XFCE-based applications. So uh, preferred applications. This thing here is a XFCE dependency, so that'll allow you to set your default applications. Another one of those is the desktop preferences, which. Uh, doesn't seem to actually work. Uh, maybe that's for PC Man FM. From what I'm seeing, the warning is for, for PC Man FM. PC Man FM is installed. That's the file manager. That's an okay selection. I personally don't like PC Man FM, but a lot of people really, really do. So uh, I'm a Crusader guy, if you didn't know that. So there are some VNC stuff here. There's uh, there's Rofi, obviously. Rem Remina is a remote desktop client. There's a couple of those. So there's multiple different VNC things here. 
uh, probably great for system administrators because system administrators use VNC stuff all the time. So that, that'd be good that they have all that stuff installed. Uh, VLC and MPV both installed. So we're coming up on some duplication of effort here. We got two different video app, you know, applications. But, you know, I have VLC and MPV both installed on my system as well. So it's not that big of a deal. They have X screensaver here. Uh, Vim is obviously installed. Xterm is here. LFTP, not sure what that is actually. I've never heard of it. NNN and Ranger are installed. And another browser. Cute browser installed. So there are multiple browsers. Now, usually in this situation where there are multiple browsers, it's for the purposes of web development, right? So you'll see a lot of distributions that have Vivaldi and Chrome and Brave and Firefox and Opera all installed because they're for web developers who need to test websites in multiple different browsers. I don't think that that's the case here simply because all of these browsers are either very, very rare, so either or very, very rare, like Cute Browser, or very, very out of date, like Dillo or eLinks or whatever. Both of those projects I'm pretty sure are really, really old just from the way they look, so I'm assuming that they're either no longer maintained or sparsely maintained or maybe even they're actively maintained but they're still very old code bases from what i can see so it's weird that those are included and i'm not sure why like the vnc stuff makes sense if this is for system administrators all that stuff makes sense to me i'm not sure what really old browsers would do have to do with system administration though i'm not a, a system administration guy so if you are maybe you can tell me why this distribution has all these really old ass browsers Maybe there is a good reason, and I just don't know. So that's all the installed applications that come with Snail Linux. There's not a lot of stuff here. It's very lightweight. The ISO weighs in at a, at 1.5 gigabytes, so it's not the least, you know, it's not the smallest ISO I've ever seen, but it's also not, you know, giant or anything. So if that matters to you, 1.5 gigabytes. The big thing that I have here, and really that's all there is to Snail Linux as far as I can tell. If you're going to use this, just a couple of notes. The user password is SNAL, just like the distro's name, and the root password is root. So if you need the passwords for any situation, which you probably will if you want to install things, that's what the passwords are. And you can obviously change those passwords if you want. The problem comes back to, and we're just going to go ahead and wrap up here. Without persistence, this doesn't really make sense to me as a regular user distro, right? If you're... You wouldn't, as a regular user, without persistence, this doesn't feel useful for me. Now, as a system administrator, when you just might need to carry a Linux distribution with you and it doesn't really matter, you know, what's on it, it just needs to be able to boot into an X session so you can do things, this could be useful. It's not going to save anything. You're not going to have anything be able to save to the disk as far as I can tell. But if you're in a situation where you just need a workable environment that has the standard things on it, a browser, access to the internet, a terminal, if that's all you need, this could be useful for that type of situation. Outside of that situation though, not quite sure why this distribution would be useful for very many people. Now, all that being said, that doesn't mean that it's bad. Uh, I love i3 Window Manager. I think more distributions should have i3 as the thing. And this has i3 as the thing, which makes me happy about it. Uh, I, and they haven't cocked it up. They, you know, they have kept the standards for the most part. So if you are used to the default i3 configuration file, for the most part, all the standard stuff is here. And obviously, it's very, very easy to configure if you wanted to use that. It's a very good distro that I don't really understand. And that's kind of where I'm going to leave it. There's some, definitely some things here that I feel like I'm missing. So if there is persistence, if you guys, if anybody in the comments ha has used Snail Linux before and there's persistence and I just missed it, let me know because I'd love to actually go back and use it properly if, if that's the case. Other than that, that was Snail Linux. Who is this for? I would say it's for people who just need a dis Linux distro in their pocket without any of the necessitation of persistence. So if you don't need persistence, but you need a Linux distribution in your pocket on a nice, on a USB key somewhere, it's a good option. It, it has Arch Linux. It, you know, I didn't show you any of the Arch Linux stuff because, you know, it's Arch Linux. If you've seen them one, you've seen them all. But because that's the case, you can install things like Yay or Paru and have access to the AUR. If you needed specific applications just for that one time of running the ISO, you could, you can install whatever you want on there. You just can't 
have it remember that those things are installed as far as I'm aware. So that's Snail Linux. If you have thoughts on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Links for Libera Pay and YouTube will be in the video description as well. Thanks everybody for your support and for watching and all that stuff. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Did I mention that? You guys are all absolutely amazing. I totally messed this ending up. and I don't know where I went wrong. It's okay. Uh, anyways, thanks for your support. Thanks, everybody, for everything. Just thanks so much. I've lost my bloody mind. I don't know what's going on anymore. I might as well retire. Good Lord. What? <laughs> the problem here is that it's like 9,000 degrees in this room because it's 80 degrees outdoors. And goodness me, it's like April. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.